The concept of molar mass is absolutely essential now to be able to do basically every type of question that we're going to do from here to the end of chemistry. And so, when you look at your periodic table, what do you see? Well, you see the big table. And then you see the elements uh, given by their uh, symbols. And of course, on the top left hand corner on the table, you have the atomic number, the number of protons in the nucleus. Now, usually written on the right hand side of the symbol, on the opposite corner of where the atomic number is, is the mass of one mole of that element with all of its isotopes taken into account. Now, we're going to actually uh, talk about isotopes and what that means, but well, essentially it's this, right? That every element can have uh, atoms that possess a different number of neutrons in the nucleus, same number of protons, and if it has the same number of electrons, which they do, same number of protons as electrons, the number of neutron difference gives us different isotopes of that element. Now, carbon can have different isotopes of itself, and when we average all the masses of those isotopes together, we get 12.01, which is recorded to two numbers after the decimal, generally speaking, on periodic tables. Well, like for instance, hydrogen on the periodic table is given 1.01 grams per mole as its atomic weight, it's called, or we're going to use the word molar mass. So here's the molar mass of hydrogen. By the way, that's just the atom of hydrogen, one atom of hydrogen. If this was H2, which is the way hydrogen is normally found in this planet, it's found as a diatomic molecule, then the molar mass is going to be 2.02 because you have two H's here, so the molar mass would be 2.02. Now we're going to do some calculations that involve all of this. Like for instance, you are told that you have 3.1 grams of iron in some kind of a sample of iron. And the question is, how many moles of iron do you have? Now you see, here's the thing. This is grams, not atoms of iron, it's grams now. So you're saying, okay, I need to understand something. I, there's got to be a ratio to turn grams into something. Yes, there is. That periodic table has molar masses that are in grams per mole. So here's what you do. You're going to go times and it's always a ratio. Now, what are the two main ratios again? Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules, things, per mole, and molar mass is grams per mole. If you've got those two ratios under control and you understand what they mean, that's it. You're done. Everything now is based on that. And you can do unit cancellation till here until the cows come home and you'll be able to be fine all the time. So, watch. 3.1 grams of iron. Okay, so we want to convert that into something that we know. Well, I don't want grams of iron, so I put that down here. But what do I want? What is that thing? Grams per mole. So therefore, that molar mass of Fe is going to be written here. What goes in front of the mole? Always that number one. How many grams of Fe are in one mole of Fe? Look on the periodic table. It tells you 55.85. And so you write 55.85 grams per one mole. Grams of Fe cancel, you're left with the moles. Here we go, you're dividing 3.1 by 55.85, and the answer is 0 0.056 moles of Fe. Hey, that's how many significant digits there? There's two there, there's four there, I kept two here, so 0 0.056, that's two significant digits, and that's the answer to that question. Now, you look at this one, you say, okay, whoa, whoa, that's 12.8 grams of PBSO3. Now, okay, following the pattern here and understanding that I want to turn, oh, by the way, the question is, how many moles of this compound do you have? And by the way, what's the name of that compound? This is lead. Which lead is it? Well, SO3 is a two negative charge on your periodic table called sulfite, so this must be the PB with the two positive charge in order to make this formula. So this is lead 2 sulfite. Now, 12.8 grams of lead 2 sulfite, how many moles do you have? Well, okay, you're going to get rid of the grams of PBSO3 and leave yourself with that moles of PBSO3. And what is that ratio again? Well, what's the molar mass of PBSO3? You've got to punch into your calculator. PB 
at 207.21, if that's molar mass, usually given that way on the periodic table, uh, because there's, a, there's sometimes a little bit of controversy as to what that last number should be. But we'll say 207.21 right now. Okay, 207.21 plus, and sulfur is 32.07. So you add one of those to one of those molar masses to three oxygens at 16.00. Don't forget that, 0 .00. So what you're going to get there when you add all that together as a molar mass for uh, lead is 287.28. So 287.28 grams of lead to sulfite for every one mole. When you do that math, you get that number divided by that, and it's going to be 0 decimal 0446 moles, moles, not mobs. There's, there's a mob of them, all right, but it's moles of PBSO3, and that is to three significant digits. So here's the thing. When you've got grams, use the molar mass to turn it into moles. Now let's try something that's just a little bit of an extension, putting everything together that we've got so far. Okay, now we take it just a little bit further. Somebody gives you a mass of potassium iodide, Ki, and says 3.871 grams of Ki. Find the number of molecules of potassium iodide. Molecules of potassium iodide. Now look, on the periodic table, there's no ratio or relationship between molecules and grams. The, the, the relationship is grams per mole, right? But here's the thing. If you can just find moles of something, you can convert to atoms and you can convert to grams. Moles is the key. Moles is the hub. So what are we going to do? We've got the grams. Well, let's turn into moles. And once we've got moles, we can find molecules. Right? Okay, here it goes. So 3.871 grams of Ki. I don't want grams of Ki. I want moles of Ki. I don't really want moles. I want molecules, but I've got to go through moles first. So now, what's the relationship between these two? Molar mass on the periodic table, 39.90 and 126.39.10 and 126.90. Now be careful, because here's what happens. You punch that into your calculator, it goes 166. Uh-uh. Ki, its molar mass is 166.00. Oh, chem guy, don't be so particular. Don't be so picky on this one. No, no, no. You listen and pay attention because here's the thing. All the molar masses in any kind of normal uh, periodic table that's given to you is going to usually, usually have two numbers after the decimal. Well, if all those numbers have two numbers after the decimal, what do you do when you add or subtract to keep significant digits? You retain the least number of decimal places. Now, even though your calculator says 166, that number is always to two numbers after the decimal. Now, why would that be important? Because if you only kept 166, and you might think that there would be three significant digits, you might think that the least number of significant digits in the question is now three. It ain't. There's five here, and there's four here, and it's still four is the lowest number of significant digits. You've got to be careful here, because teachers like to see if you're paying attention. Okay, you don't want to lose that mark on a test, right? So here's the thing. That right now gives me the moles of Ki, but I don't want moles of Ki. The question was how many molecules? Well, there's a relationship between the molecules of Ki and the moles of Ki, and that is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules for every one mole. When you do that math, this is what I get, 1.404, but wait, 1.404 times 10 to the 20, pardon me, 22, and that's going to be molecules of Ki, but here's the problem. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I was talking about five significant digits there and four over there, but Avogadro's number has three. So you're going to give me 1.40, and that was a four, so that rounds down 1.40 times 10 to 22 molecules of Ki. See, that, that question's not so bad, is it? Just think. Use the ratios that you understand. You'll be able to be fine with these.